Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran in Warren, Oregon. Today on this third Sunday of Advent, I'm preaching from the book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 18 through 35. <clears throat> the disciples of John reported all these things to him. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come? or are we to wait for another while the men had when the men had come to him they said john the baptist has sent us to you to ask are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another jesus had just then cured many people of diseases plagues and evil spirits and had given sight to many who were blind and he answered them Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who put on fine clothing and live in luxury are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people who heard this, including the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God, because they had been baptized with John's baptism. But by refusing to be baptized by him, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected God's purpose for themselves. To what then will I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bono from the rock band U2 grew up in a Christian home, attending an Episcopalian church. However, he credits his faith to spending time with the father of his boyhood best friend. Yet during an interview in 1987, Bono said, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. The important thing is that he kept searching. Even though he was now wildly popular with the world at his feet, he knew something was missing. He knew about Christ, but did not have a relationship with him. So he kept pursuing, exploring his doubts, until he became a believer and devoted follower. In a 2013 interview, the journalist kept pushing Bono on his Christian belief. Bono offered this. I don't think you're let off easily by saying Jesus was a great thinker or a great philosopher. Because actually, he went around saying he was the Messiah. That's why he was crucified. He was crucified because he said he was the son of God. So he either, in my view, was the son of God or he was nuts. And I find it hard to accept that whole millions and millions of lives, half the earth 
for 2,000 years have been touched, have felt their lives touched and inspired by some nutter. I just, I can't believe it. A bit later, the interviewer is more direct. Therefore, it follows you believe he was divine? And Bono is clear in his response. Yes. Bono was invoking a version of Lewis Trilemma, named after C.S. Lewis, who popularized it in his apologetic writings. The argument is meant to show that if one accepts the scriptural account of Jesus as accurate, one cannot reasonably consider Jesus to simply be a good teacher who wasn't divine, since he made radical claims about himself, such as recorded in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Though Bono only offers two alternatives, that Christ was either God or nuts, C.S. Lewis offers three possibilities, that Christ was either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. The implication is that if Jesus was not the Lord, then he was not a good teacher or someone worth following. By the way, if you're not familiar with C.S. Lewis, he was a staunch atheist who, as he sought to explain and substantiate his atheism, came to be a believer and one of the great Christian apologists and authors. Many people in our society are restless. They're seeking, but they may not know whom they are seeking or what they are seeking. Fortune.com shared in 2023 that Americans unlock and check their smartphones an average of 144 times per day, every day. And once we have our face in that phone, it grabs our attention for an average of four hours and 25 minutes per day, each day, every day. That means they unlock their phones for just about five to six minutes for the 16 hours they're awake every day. These are habits of searching. There's a restlessness that comes from seeking and not finding. Though for many of us, there's an even greater restlessness from seeking without really knowing what we're even looking for. Around 400 AD, St. Augustine published his spiritual autobiography, Confessions. It is recognized as one of the most important works of all Western literature. He says to God in prayer, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. In God is our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. We find who we truly are. We discover our identity and our purpose in him. But apart from such a relationship, we are restless, searching, and seeking. As one pastor put it, we find ourselves willing to climb the highest mountains, run through fields, crawl, scale walls, and even hold the very hand of the devil to satisfy our deep longing and seeking, only to find that none of these feats of ours will ever fulfill who we were created to be. Nowadays, we go down rabbit holes of hyperlinks, endlessly swiping and scrolling deeper and deeper down as if we could scroll our way to what our hearts are longing for. In our gospel text for today, John is searching. In Matthew's gospel, we're told that John is sitting in a dank prison cell and starting to doubt. He was so sure that his cousin Jesus was the one to come, the Messiah. But if he is the one, why is he going from town to town, restoring sight to this one and curing the leprosy of that one? 
Why doesn't he get an army together and drive out the Romans? The Messiah was sent to release the captives and let the oppressed go free. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Why doesn't Jesus reestablish the throne of King David? Why doesn't he save John, his faithful prophet and proclaimer? John is longing and looking. He sends messengers to ask if Jesus is what he has been searching for or if he needs to keep looking. And Jesus sends John's disciples back as witnesses to what they have seen and heard. The promises of Isaiah are being fulfilled in the ministry of Jesus. Verse 22, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. What the people of God have been seeking for centuries is being fulfilled in Jesus. We're often aware of our need for physical or mental healing, and God does work both miraculously and through the medical community to provide such care. But deep in our souls, we long for a right relationship with God. This only comes by God's grace through faith as the good news is shared. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus says of himself, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This good news, which we cling to in hope, is that God himself sought us. God seeks and God finds. Jesus' mission was to seek and to save the wandering, the restless, and the rebellious. In other words, Jesus came to save and seek people like you and me. Jesus found some who were lost, but in John chapter 10, verse 16, he said, I have other sheep who are not of this fold. I must bring them also. That's us and those around us. And so in each generation since, he sends his disciples in his name to seek out and bring his wandering daughters and sons home into his fold. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We have been sought and found. Now Jesus sends us to go and seek. And there are so many who are still longing for something better, looking for something, something to give them hope in this world and the next. God has blessed this heaven-sent mission with his presence in the Holy Spirit. And on the way, we may have some doubts within our own faith, but that's okay because Jesus offers us the same answer he gave to John about his doubts. Our assurance comes from two things. First, we have his works. We need to take time to learn what kinds of things Jesus accomplished. The Apostle John calls the miraculous works of Jesus signs. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written about in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The greatest of these miracles 
was when Jesus himself rose from the dead. Second, we have God's word. 700 years before Jesus, the prophet of Isaiah told us how to recognize the Messiah. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 through 6. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. Our assurance of salvation is based on the word of God, not on our feelings. Our feelings can change, especially if we're going through a difficult time. However, the word of God is unchanging. 1 John chapter 5, 11 through 13. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. May King Jesus give our hearts that long for his wandering children to find their way home. May he give us a faith that trusts his Spirit's work to call all people into a living relationship with him. And may he give us a willing obedience to be his sent ones who would seek in his name. Amen.